Now we're going to look at a few examples. These are quite straightforward ones of solving riders with variables and they mostly deal with two or three theorems at a time and so that's a good way to start. In the first example we are told that PR is a diameter. So go over PR, highlight it so that you're very aware of the information that you're being given. What PR as a diameter also gives us is the fact that we have 90 degrees here. So if you go and look at your cheat sheet, you'll see now I'm given a diameter. What else should I look for? Because everything you're given gives you more. Okay, I have 90 degrees. And I'm told that it's a diameter and I've done what I can for the fact that it's a diameter. I'm also checking are there tangents and there aren't any. So I think I've covered everything that the diameter can give me. They tell me here's this weird information where they now make a thing about the fact that these are on the circumference. Okay, P, R, M, S. Interesting. So that's a cyclic quad, isn't it? Does it help with anything? Well, I think it helps alerting us to the fact that M is on the circumference and that it's part of things. And so I think that's probably enough. And then we're told center Q. Okay, so I've marked out the center, but what else can a center give me? Look at your cheat sheet. Okay, we've got radii, which means this P2 that they've labeled as a dot is also the same as angle M and I think maybe that's why we were told about M okay and so center have I got something at the center and then also at the circumference no so I think that's all that that's going to give me what about this notion of PS SR and PM okay PS is making R doesn't make anything else what about SR SR makes P and nothing else. And then PM, okay, I've, I think I've covered everything I'm supposed to with the chords, but sometimes we miss things and we get back to them. It's totally okay. PM bisects RPS. I find a lot of people are not comfortable with that word because it's not really something that we use in everyday English. If it bisects RPS, so go from R to P, to S. And the angle then made at P, this one, is bisected. Here they've actually gone and given you those two equal angles, but bisecting means you end up with two equal angles and you might have to actually add that to diagrams in future. And now we notice a change in the way that the questions are structured because they start saying prove that, not find um, what angle R is equal to. It's prove that. Okay. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to prove that PS is parallel to QM. Right, that didn't come up. I didn't find anything like that. Um, how would I prove parallel lines? Let's just make a few notes here. I could look at alternate angles. I can look at corresponding angles and I can look at cointary angles. I want you to go and highlight the lines that they want you to prove parallel, but you're not going to put parallel signs on them. Just highlight them. And so the question now is with those lines that we are alerted to, where would the alternate angles be or the cointary or the corresponding? We've got the whole of angle P could be equal to the whole of angle Q1, but we've got no information about Q1, so it really doesn't look like it's going anywhere. What you've probably spotted now is you've got angle M and P1 that are alternate. I mean, they're already equal, but how did we get there? And that's the trick now is to lay out your proof in a way that makes sense from start to finish. So for question A, what we're going to start with is how we get these angles equal to each other. So P1 and P2 are equal given, right? 
Then I got P2 equals M. What was that about? That was angles opposite equal radii. Okay, and then therefore the others are equal to each other. Okay, so that's going to be fine. We're going to start with P1 equals P2. And a reminder that with geometry you never really know what's getting marks. So just write, not write everything down. I, I want to be very careful. Sometimes people write way too much. But write down any logical step that you feel you might have to explain to someone who's really struggling to understand. So what I'm saying is write down every step that can be used to prove what you need to prove. Don't write down everything you can see on the diagram. That is very, very different. It's got to link logically, otherwise it gets no marks. Okay, so we've got P1 is P2. We also have P2 equals M. And my reason there is angles opposite equal radii. It must be angles opposite equal radii, not angles opposite equal sides. You can split it up. If you want to do angles opposite equal sides, you first need to talk about the fact that the radii are equal to each other. Okay, if P1 equals P2 and P2 equals M, then P1 clearly also equals M. Right, so how does that help us? We're supposed to prove that PS is parallel to QM. Well, we can, we can put that down there. Therefore, PS is parallel to QM, and it's because the alternate angles are equal. But what we're going to say, just to really clarify that I'm not using parallel lines, I am proving them. I'm going to say converse alt angles and I'm not putting the parallel lines in there because they are there. For question B, I need to prove that QM is perpendicular to SR. So I need to prove 90 degrees. Okay, I think it's very important to be mindful of how geometry questions are structured. I first had to prove these guys are parallel and I did. Now I need to go and put on the fact that they are parallel. And there's nothing automatic about QM being perpendicular to SR. I mean, look at it. It looks, definitely looks perpendicular, but I didn't mark out a 90 degrees there from my original information. So it's going to come from question A. Because these are parallel, you have this 90, which we haven't used yet, by the way, and that's the key, is that this 90 we haven't used, but they're asking for 90, so maybe it links to that one. And it does, because now we have corresponding angles. So it was really straightforward. Right, so angle S equals 90 degrees. You've got to state that. I know it was already on my diagram, but I added it, so I have to justify it. And that was angle in a semicircle. Then from there, I've got that angle E2 is 90 degrees. And that was because of the parallel lines that I proved. And a word about that now. Let's say you couldn't prove that these were parallel. You can leave that question out and then go straight to question B, assuming that those have been already proven. Okay, you're allowed to do that. We understand that you may have to skip questions because you just don't see it in the moment. And then you can go back and fix it. But you're allowed to leave out question A and then assume question A has been proven in order to get question B. And the reason we allow that is because the question scaffold and it means that if you don't get the first one, you've got like no chance of getting the second one. So we allow you that chance. We allow you to make that assumption. But you cannot assume backwards. You could only assume that what they've already asked you is now proven. So you can't, for example, in question A, already assume that QM is perpendicular to SR. Right, with E2 being 90 degrees, you can then go straight off and say QM is perpendicular to SR. For question C, we've got to prove QM bisects SR. And here's the word bisect coming up right here. Okay, so QM, look where that is, QM. I've got to prove that that bisects SR. S, R, that one. Okay, so I've actually got to prove, I'm required to prove, RTP, that S, E equals E, R. I'm required to prove two equal 
lines in the same way that the bisecting of MP and it bisected angle P there, you got two equal angles. Here, I'm looking for two equal line segments. Okay, so I'm just making myself aware that that's what I'm required to prove. And I can write that down for an examiner to see as well. Okay, can you see it? I've got 90 degrees here. I've got a line from the center. So that means it bisects. Okay, so um, what, I, what I do know is that Q is the center. So I'm just laying out all the really obvious stuff that is given. Okay, and then I've got QM is perpendicular to SR. That was proven. Okay, therefore SE equals ER. Therefore, QM bisects SR. What's my reason? Okay, what am I given? I'm given that there's a line from the center and it is perpendicular to the chord. I can't say it bisects the chord because that's the thing I'm trying to prove. So I've got to use other information to get back to the fact that it bisects.